Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you're here. I want to first start off and thank all the channel members. Thank you guys so much. I love you and I appreciate you more than you know. And anybody who's just coming by to watch the channel, who's subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, and you get the chance and are so inclined, if you'd hit that subscribe button and that bell notification, it would really help me out. And it'll notify you when I release new content. Um, today, what I wanted to do is, going through my collection, I have more knives than I, than I actually carry. Because I collect them, right? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through my collection and come up with 10 knives that I feel like might have been forgotten. They might not be or get as much, uh, what would I say, awareness as you would want them to. Or um, they might be knives that you guys forgot about. And maybe this will remind some of y'all how cool they were. So these are all really cool knives in my opinion. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, 10, top, my top 10 um, kind of forgotten knives that are unique in one way or another. And we're going to start with this PMP User 2. The PMP User 2 is a top flipper knife that's very much uh, bug out like. Uh, I say that only because it's a neutral, thin gentleman's knife that has about a three inch blade um what makes this knife special is it was a great value i want to say it was right around 160 dollars at white mountain knives it is titanium with uh titanium hardware it does have a wire clip which i like and it's got this blade which is a top flipper but it also is very middle finger flickable and best yet it's s90v so this is a knife that is made out of S90V, has one of the best lock bar accesses, if you can see there. I can get just right through there. Drop shutty, on bearings, very thin, very gentlemanly, but able, right? Long enough to, to get some things done and, whoops, very slicey. So that's one that I see come back into stock every now and then. Um, it's a knife that I think you can find on PMP's website. I'm not sure. But if you Google the PMP User 2 and you see this knife available, don't overlook it because it is kind of a plain knife. It is very understated in my mind, but it is made and designed very well. Um, even if you're just a top flipper. I hate front flippers. I don't like to use them. Um, this one does have very good jimping that goes over the top here. So with a thumb, which is the only way I'm really successful front flipping, I can get it with no problem. I can't reach over it because my finger's too short, but I can get my finger on the side of the blade and middle finger flick it with authority. So that is the PMP user two. I'm going to call this number 10 on our list and we're going to work backwards from there. Moving on, guys, this is a knife that I actually traded for. I actually traded with this knife with Brother Dark Gravity. Um, I had a couple of uh, Ace Grands, and he wanted he was collecting different blade steels, and he wanted an Elmax Grand and my Carta, and he had this very unique uh, concept bulldozer with moku tie um it's got this really my only moku tie except for my badass good screw get good screw but anyway i diverge that was my brain but this is also a front flipper knife whoops it's 20 cv it's got this big sheep's footy blade modified sheep's foot whatever you call it, call it. Timascus clip, Timascus pivot collar. It's got anodized hardware. Drop shutty is a day as long. Front flips very well because this front flipper tab comes up over the top. Again, I don't have long enough fingers or big enough hands to do a reach around on this one. 
But this is another one that I can middle finger flick just by putting the side of my finger against the blade. It's a bigger knife, probably one of the biggest knives in this collection. That 20 CV blade is very sharp. Great utilitarian shape, I think. It's got a very neutral handle. I can choke up on it if I want to. Has a real well done sharpening choil. Um, I think the knife looks really neat. I think the uh, action is just off the chart. I don't have a lot of concepts. I have a slip joint. I have this bulldozer. And this that might be it. I can't think of any other concepts right off the top of the of the list that I have. But I was glad to trade this one with Brother Dark Gravity. And it is definitely one of my underrated knives that I don't carry nearly enough that is unique in one way or another. And that is the Concept Bulldozer. This is kind of like towards the higher end. They make this knife in G10, different blade materials. You can get it for a lot less money. But that is the Bulldozer. This brings me to one of my early, what I would call at the time, a premium knife. And I still think it's every bit of premium knife. This knife you can still find on Amazon. You can find it on a lot of manufacturers' websites. It is the Kaiser Clutch. This is a knife that I got about two, two and a half years ago. Flipper-only deployment. Perfectly centered. S35VN blade. Carbon fiber on this little bolster lock. Detent. That's just snappy as you could want. I love the blade. I love the grind. The bolster lock is done fantastically well. Has awesome detent. It is a flipper only knife because you don't have any of that blade exposed. But again, a gentleman's folder that is very reasonably priced, especially now. And I'll let you guys, whoops, I'll let you guys Google these so you can find them yourself. If I can get any of them linked, um, if I can find them on Amazon or a good price like that, I'll throw a link up there for you in the description. But the Kaiser Clutch, I actually got this on Amazon, and it's just a great knife. It's very thin. I don't carry it enough. I don't know whose maker's mark that is. I don't know if y'all can see that. I can't because the only thing it says on the blade is S35VN, their model number, a little Kaiser, and the clutch. But this is the maker's mark. But that frame lock or that bolster lock is super smooth. The knife is super smooth. Drop shut, snaps open. And that is the Kaiser clutch. Again, fantastic knife, titanium clip, easy gentleman's carry, and just a real winner. Moving on, we come to a knife that I really don't carry enough. This used to be a knife that stayed in my pocket. Um, this is the Monterey Bay Slayback, the regular size Slayback. They've since come out with a um, XL Slayback or a big one. Uh, my good buddy A to Z EDC has that particular knife. This is perfect size for me. Um, you've got this beautiful sand my blade coated and shielded you can see that line where that is the blade is wrapped right there titanium liner lock drop shut action flipper only super sharp i love the worn cliff blade I love the simplicity of the knife. Um, I love the fact that it stays perfectly centered, that it's a Ray Laconico design. I've never had any issues with this knife. I just do not carry it enough. But it is an absolute winner. It's a forever knife. Um, again, if I had bigger hands, I would look at the XL. You've got the Monterey Bay Maker's Mark there, but besides that, it is sterile. And you got Ray Laconico or R. Laconico on the blade. Just a very understated, elegant, Sanma ZDP 189 blade. 
just a gorgeous little knife. And that is the NBK Monterey Bay Knives Slayback. Moving on, the Flytanium Arcade. I think this knife is unique because I think it is, if you saw my review on it, I think it is everything the AD 20.5 could have been or is. I'm a huge fan of the AD 20.5 by Andrew Demko. I'm convinced that this knife that licensed the shark lock from Andrew Demko, it is a shark lock, not a lock that looks like a shark lock. Um, I believe it's made in the same factory. When you look at these knives side by side, this being this knife, the drop point compared to the Andrew Demko 20.5, there are more similarities than there are differences. I love the shark lock. I always have. I love the uh, detent. I know it's not very strong. I know it's a different kind of detent, but it's one that I got used to because I always like fidgeting with Demko's locks, whether it was a scorpion lock, whether it was the triad lock. I always kind of embraced his locks and, you know, learned to, learn to manipulate them. And this is one that has just been a winner for me. And the Flytanium Arcade, this knife here, gives you the better blade steel. It is uh, S35VN, I believe. Um, yeah, I want to say it's S35. Yep, S35VN, got the Flytanium logo and the little Flytanium word there. This knife you can buy, had um, barrel spacers. I purchased off the Flytanium website, a black titanium back spacer that I added. I picked up these black, um, or maybe it came with these black. No, these are black titanium scales. So you can buy different color scales. You just pop in right here. You take off these two screws or the clip and that screw, and you can switch out your scales. Um, just a really fine knife. I really enjoy it. I think it's, I don't see a lot of people talk about it. I don't see a lot of people giving it love. Aluminum body, uh, no G10, no FRN, just what I think the original 20.5 could have been built to be. I mean, it's just, it's kind of like it naturally evolved to this. And I love this knife. It's my favorite, even though it's not a Demco. I call it one of my Demcos. I keep it with my four other 20.5s that are all different blade steels, different blade shapes, and they've all got modded scales from titanium to micarta to aluminum. This is thinner. This is came this way from the factory, and Flytanium is going to keep bringing out accessories so that I can keep upgrading it and personalizing I thought it was really cool. So that is the Flytanium Arcade, a.k.a. Uh, I call it the Demco 20.6. Moving on. Another Amazon find and one of my early purchases. You can also find this at Blade HQ, who I don't shop with. You can find it at a few other knife retailers. It might not still be in stock. It is the Kaiser Gemini. It's a front flipper. Very, very light gentleman's folder with S35VN satin finish blade. This beautiful carbon fiber, shred carbon fiber. You got a nice titanium backspacer, titanium clip, drop shut action. Very well jimped for the reverse flick if that's what you're into. But for me, I can get my finger in there, my middle finger, and take advantage of that hole and pop it out that way. It is more of a full-size knife. So if we look at some of the knives we've been looking at, it might not be as fat as some of the other long ones. Um, but it is a good-size knife. And it's well under $200. I think you get a lot of value for your money there. Um, and if you look at all these knives that I have out here that we'll be looking at tonight, this one is by far the lightest and the most nimble because it is literally shred carbon fiber with a very thin inset stainless steel scale and lock bar. Locks up very, very well. 
just done impeccably well, guys. And this is a several two, three, maybe even older than three year old Kaiser. Absolutely love it. Love the blade shape. Love the action. And I could recommend it to anybody. And it is the Kaiser Genie, I think. Moving on. I'm sad to say that I do not think this one's immediately available unless you find it at uh, NAS sale where I've seen it. Um, for a while, you could find it on Cavisto's site. Cavisto site. Every now and then, they pop up on Amazon. They have several other of these Ferrum Forge drop collaborations that are still in stock. If you go to Amazon and you search uh, Ferrum Forge drop or drop knives, you'll see that there are a lot of these older um, designs that are available for purchase. That's how I purchased this one. I purchased this one about six months ago because um, it was still on the site. I love the blade shape. I've got a good friend in Huntsville, A to Z EDC, who had this knife. It is, again, a thin gentleman's knife with a fantastic forward finger choil. Great blade. Super slicey. I want to say it is 20 CV. Might be S35 VN. Because I think it's manufactured by Wii. You can see I've used it quite a bit. I've got some scratches on the blade. Doesn't really bother me. You've got the drop logo there. Fair and Forge logo there, titanium clip, frame lock, beautiful machine backspacer. Got a little place for your lanyard here if you're into that. And then you've got this oversized blade that drops like a champ. You've got this very easy to use flipper action. You just simply push it down. You can light switch it. Or you can push button it. Push button it's a little bit stiffer. Or you can do like me. It's got a perfect deployment hole. That's why I picked it up. That's what I found kind of attractive about it was its size, its unique blade, and its ability to be finger flicked with these. I love the front choil. Huge win. It's a great cutter. I've processed a lot of cardboard with this knife. Probably where most of these scratches came from because it is a satin blade. But this is the Fair and Forge Drop Buck. B-U-C. No K. Moving on, we come to probably the best value or one of the best values of any knife that I've had in my collection. Um, I remember Kevin left the EDC, did a video on this knife, calling it the poor man's Rosie. And after handling a Rosie, I can say I haven't handled a Spiro knife or an Asher Spiro in the last couple of years. But I purchased this one about two years ago. I reached out and uh, sent him a DM to see if I could get one of these put together so I could buy it. And I did. It cost me less than $110, $115. It is a titanium body, stonewashed S35VN blade, frame lock, machine back spacer, jimping. Nice sharpening choil. Very good blade geometry. Thin grind. And it looks and feels in terms of being light, being nimble, having very good action. Kind of like a... Nothing feels like a rosy, guys. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it does. But I can tell you that it feels pretty damn close to cost, you know, one seventh of the price. And I've seen this knife on Instagram at the liner lock with shred carbon fiber. Makes me very, very interested about it. Um, you know, I haven't bought an Asher in a while. I've still got a good collection of Spiros, titanium thumb stud Spiros. This is my favorite. I've got a G10 Spiro. I've given several Asher knives away on Friday Night Flicks because I can't say enough about 
what a great value these knives are for the materials that you get, the fit and finish, because they're QC'd and put together by him before they go out. And it's just a win. And that's the Asher Spiro with a hole way up there for me as a knife that I wish I carried more that punches way above its weight and it had to be in this list of 10. So as we move on, I've wrestled with number one and number two and this one came in at number two. Um, for those of you that know, you know. For those of you that don't, I'll share it with you. This is the OG Dylan Mallory Forrest. His first, if I'm not mistaken, knife to come out under his name. He had a lot of knives that he designed for other companies like Artisan Cutlery. But I remember when he was on Lefty EDC and he was showing the prototype for this knife that he designed. I instantly fell in love with it. Got a great pocket clip. It only has the finger hole to deploy it with. It is very thin. It is very light. It's got a full backspacer. Shred carbon fiber that's just beautiful. Doesn't have any voids whatsoever. And it has detent for days. I love the blade. I love the finger choil. I love how thin it is. I love how sharp it is. Probably one of the sharpest. All these are pretty sharp. But this is the thin, the blade geometry, the uh, length. It's a full-size knife. Um, I think the other large one that I had in this collection was the Concept Bulldozer. You can see that the Mallory Forest is a full-size knife, you know, a medium full-size knife. But I love it because it's so thin. It carries like a much smaller knife. It's on bearings. has amazing liner lock drop shut action. Again, a stonewashed blade that I think is very unique. There is a Forest V2 out now that upgrades this a little bit in terms of incorporating a titanium frame, which I think would only make it better. This is the OG, and this is a knife that will always be in my collection because it means a whole lot to me. I really love it, and it is the Mallory Forest. Dylan Mallory Forest V1. Brings me to my number one knife that I don't carry enough, that I don't talk about enough, but it's so exciting because this knife was so popular. It was very expensive for what it is. Um, and they made a cheaper version or a less expensive version. This one is in carbon fiber and it is a unibody or an integral carbon fiber. So you've got this one piece of carbon fiber milled out and then you've got this axis lock style system here that has aluminum and steel on the internals, but all this carbon fiber is milled out. So, and it's an M390 blade. So this knife ran around 300 bucks when I picked it up. Well, at Blade Show this year, um, they had this knife in 14C look just like this, had the blade I'm getting ready to show you, but it was 14C and G10, and it was about 145 bucks, 150 bucks. But this is the Big Belly by Tuya. It is a fantastic knife and probably the best employment of an axis style, bar style lock I don't know if it's the spring tension. Um, for whatever it is, it gives me fantastic detent. It is a Michael Gavitz. I don't know if that's Gavitz. Galvi design. Um, that's the maker's mark there. As you can tell, you've got this felt satin, deep flat grind belly up blade that is an absolute cutting machine I can only imagine that this would be a great game processing knife it is a medium sized knife um, it's going to be hmm, probably right in there around the size of the Spiro and the Buck if we're just looking at them to compare so a medium sized knife but a good one it's one that it carries like a dream it's got thumb studs that are very easy to get to and you literally just have to push them and that knife 
flies out. You don't have a lazy detent. It's very light because it's unibody construction and you don't have any liners inside. Let's see if I can get it where you can see this. I don't know if you can see that carbon fiber in there, but you've got carbon fiber, the entire body, and then right up here in the front, you can see a few cutouts in there, and your assembly is all hollowed out right here. So when you take this knife apart, you literally have this carbon fiber shell that is unibody, and then you have this little piece that comes out. So it is probably the lightest knife in this collection, but it's thick. It's chunky, it is ready for action, it is, I think, just a fantastic gentleman's folder, and it's one of my absolute favorites, and I don't get to carry it enough, guys. Um, I guess that's a blessing, but I felt like I needed to draw some attention to these knives, especially since this one's available um, in a G10 14C version, but every one of these knives need the recognition that they might have gotten a review here a lot of them need to be re-reviewed because i was only doing really short reviews when i started there were only a couple of minutes that didn't tell you that much about the knife um but yeah these are these are some good ones and these are some that again i went through the collection and looked at knives that i would be interested in buying again that I would want to know were available if I wasn't or hadn't been collecting in a long time um, or just hadn't seen these knives before or if I had to see them again to know that they're good knives. Guys, any one of these knives are a huge recommendation. I think they're all great knives. They're going to stay in my collection. I appreciate you joining me on my knife journey and stopping by the channel to watch my content. I love you all. I thank the channel members. You're all important to me. I do it because I enjoy connecting with each of you. I ask that you look out for the guy or gal to your left. I ask that you look out for the guy or gal to your right. I ask that you look out for each other because I love y'all. I hope you move forward with love in your heart and choose debate, not hate. Guys, peace.